Welcome back to Good Morning La La Land on Transformation Tuesday. No better than to have a transformational coach, writer, author, speaker. Russell Reynolds is in the house. Welcome. Thank you. How are you? Thank you. I'm fantastic. Pleasure. Man, Pleasure. Man you guys, I, I'm inspired by the first guest. I'm inspired by all of you. I actually want to interview you. <laughs> like, you guys are amazing. The, the gifts that you're bringing to the world is just such a blessing. That proves your more. coach. Yeah. <laughs> no. That proves your coach. Oh, uh, well, thank you so much for sharing that. You know, I'm really excited about Rusty and the Circus of Doubt. Tell us a little bit about your book. So, um, it's, a, it's my first children's book, but it's really a personal development book in disguise. It's got a message for all ages. And I was inspired to write the book when I heard about how these young circus elephants are trained, mm -hmm. how they're shackled with these heavy chains and, and they pull and try to get away, but they can't. Well, obviously the chain's too big and they're too small. And eventually they stop trying. From that moment forward, even as full grown adult elephants, they're held in place with this tiny, thin rope attached to a little wooden stake. Now they could snap it in half and rip the whole circus tent down, but they don't because they don't believe that they can. And I heard that, mm. wow, what a metaphor for our lives. How many of us are chained to a job, a circumstance, a relationship, a belief system, right? Yeah. That we think is this unbreakable chain in reality, just a tiny, thin rope. Wow. So the book follows uh, the story of Rusty, a young elephant named after the chain he was bound by and his journey of self-discovery and eventual empowerment through the Circus of Doubt, which is the system designed to keep him playing small. Wow. Uh, wow. Russell, would you share a bit about your personal circus? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I, I don't think I'm alone in this, that uh, the not good enough is the chain that mm -hmm. held me back most of my life. And it is an ongoing battle that, you know, it's funny that thing just keeps showing up <laughs> in different ways. And, and it's just remembering that. And, you know, uh, for me through whether it started when my dad left when I was three or, you know, uh, getting beat up in school when I was, you know, scrawny and didn't play sports or anything like that, whatever it is, these seeds of not good enough can really put us in this circus of doubt in this prison. And, and you know, Society in and of itself can be disempowering, mm -hmm. right? Where that's the circus of doubt, but it's the one in here that's the real problem, right? And anybody or anything that tells you you are less than amazing is lying. The problem is when we start telling the lie to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I did that for so many years. And, and, and yeah, fear of what other people think and, and fear of, am I good enough, shows up. But my awareness in response to fears, just face it, right? Shine the light on the shadow because when you shine a light on a shadow, it disappears. Oh, it's not that. real. It's interesting because um, if you take a look at like prevailing, the word prevail, mm -hmm. it really means to be more powerful than anything, mm. to prevail. And and the beliefs out there and and get going past our past programming, you know, how do you do that? There's a million different ways, whether it be through right. subconscious work, whether it be through getting coaching, whatever that is, but really knowing the truth of who you are how did you come to that truth? How did you remember who you are? How did you come back to that? Ongoing process, right? We're all a work in progress to some extent. Um, you know, it's it's been a it's been a journey. I mean, I um, I didn't fit in uh, at any point growing up. I mean, I quit high school to go live at a spiritual community in Scotland. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that made that my school. So, wow. like, it's been going and going and going, and you know, a big piece for me is recognizing when you're a doctor of divinity, mm. you understand that divinity exists within each and every one of us. And it's not metered out in, in you know, different portions. Only you got it. No, right. Right, right, right. Well, she's a doctor of divinity, so she's obviously got more divinity or a different divinity than I do. No, no, we all have the same spark. That, and so if anybody in the world has achieved wealth, achieved greatness, achieved whatever it is that you want to achieve, then that seed exists within you too. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Go for it. Be willing to get messy. Be willing to screw it up. You know, and that was a big one for me. It's like the illusion of perfection, mm. you know, held me back. It's like, oh, it's got to be, I got to have everything just right. It's never going to be just right. right. I'm not a parent, but any parent will tell you it's never going to be just right. You're, right? You're never going to have the right circumstances. Just go. So step true. forward. When, and when you step forward in faith, the universe responds to that. So fascinating because we go, well, I'm not good enough because someone's going to judge me. Like, who am I to do this? But then you realize if anyone's judging you, it's because of their own self-doubt within right. themselves. Mm -hmm. Like, so right. it's just this vicious cycle mm -hmm. of the limitations that people are projecting out there. So how do you 
make sure that you are in an environment and around people that only hold you for the highest. That's the key is to make sure that you surround yourself with people who, who see you as your highest good, who see the potential within you, not the problems. Mm -hmm. and, and that's up to each of us as individuals, right? Like, I would love to hang out with you guys as often as possible because you all have that yeah. energy. It costs a lot, though, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> These two charge for their time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, we're just very discerning. We're very discerning, discerning <laughs> okay? Right. So. I charge a cocktail and a dinner. But on that note, you know, I, speaking of potential, I'd really like to explore with you the six human needs that, ah, I know yes. that you yes. really focus on in your teaching. This was fascinating to me, and this is Tony Robbins. I'll, I'll quote Tony Robbins a lot because he's such an inspiration for me and a mentor. Um, but he talks about regardless of culture, continent, or language, we all have these same six human needs. Mm -hmm. And they're not wants, they're not kind of like the has. These are primal needs. And the first one is certainty or security or comfort, mm -hmm. right? They're same thing, we have to have some level of that in our lives, whether it's a, a roof over our heads or a meal on the table. The second is uncertainty or variety, you know, and Tony says, because God has a sense of humor, right? It's because if we knew what every moment of every day was going to be like, it would be groundhogs. They would be bored out of our minds. Third is significance, which is huge because people will live and die for significance. You'll see people all the time operating for significance, right? And if that's your prime driver, you're going to have some problems in your life, mm -hmm. in my experience, right? Uh, fourth is love and connection, which are grouped together, but they're not the same thing. People want love, but they'll settle for connection. Ooh. Right? Mm -hmm. right? As Chris Rock said, two crackheads will stay together forever. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's not love, it's connection. It's exciting, right? as he says. Right? Right? Misery loves company. That's connection. And the fifth and sixth are growth and contribution. These are more mm -hmm. spiritual or fulfillment needs. Everything in the universe is either growing or dying. There's no stagnation. Mm -hmm. If you think you're just sitting still, you're moving backwards. Mm -hmm. And everything must contribute to something greater than itself or it becomes extinct. And this is where I found, because I was so significance driven in the past, mm -hmm. which is easy to become if you're operating from a place of not good enough. Mm -hmm. But I've come to recognize that the only significance worth having is through love and contribution. Mm -hmm. How much of an impact, how much of a difference am I making? What kind of a ripple effect am I leaving in the world that's gonna last long after I'm gone? Yeah. So Russell, how can people, understand within themselves where they're operating from. Mm -hmm. um, there's a six human needs test that you can find online. Uh, just Google six human needs test and it'll give you an idea. Uh, again, if certainty and significance are your prime drivers, you're in for a life of suffering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so figuring out where that is. And the other thing about the needs is we can meet all of our needs in a positive way, a neutral way, or a negative destructive way. So Smoking a cigarette can give me significance. It can give me certainty, but it's not necessarily healthy. Mm -hmm. So how can I find another way to meet those needs? That's our work. And this is what I help people to do as well. Let's say there's a woman who wants to lose weight and she means it. She really wants to lose weight. I really want to help her, but she's used food as a substitution for love and connection, right? And that happens all the time. Unconscious parents will bribe their kids with food. Just here, take this, go away. Right? And let's say she gets her sense of significance met or love and connection met from all the attention she gets from being overweight. Mm -hmm. Her girlfriends are like, come on, Jenny, you can do it. We're so proud of you on this diet. Mm -hmm. So to her subconscious mind, what I'm actually doing is taking away love, connection, and significance. I don't stand a chance, and neither does she, until she finds a way to meet those needs in a positive, healthy way. Oh, cool, that's mm -hmm. powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So important. So I love Tony Robbins, of course, and so many great teachers. And we think everyone's doing it. You know, I think there's a lot of people go, oh, you know, another life coach. And I, yes, we need a <laughs> yeah. lot of you yes, guys. Please. We need Absolutely. everyone we can get yeah. on yes. this planet to help us bring this work out. So thank yeah. you so much My for pleasure. all of your work. And this book My is pleasure. amazing. Where can people get your book? Uh, the book is on Amazon uh, right now, Rusty in the Circus of Doubt. So. Amazing. Thank yeah. you so Tell much. Tell everyone so where much. they can find and follow you if mm -hmm. they want to work with you. Uh, find and follow me, uh, G. Russell Reynolds. Uh, my first name is George, so I abbreviate that. So G. Russell Reynolds on Instagram, Facebook, uh, website, grussellreynolds.com. Love to talk to you guys and help in any way I can. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Stay you, guys. We'll be right back.